fish we fry, their DNA is now at our command. The genes we want can now be moved, the food we eat can be improved by adding traits that nature never planned. This power is now the subject of dispute. Are we biting into new forbidden fruit? Cracking the code. Genetic mysteries to unfold. Cracking the code. Genetic secrets will be told. Cracking the code. Despite the immense excitement surrounding the Human Genome Project, the DNA-based revolution in genetics has so far had its widest impact in agriculture. Hundreds of millions of acres have been planted with genetically engineered crops. The farm is now the largest demonstration site for the new age of genetics. Just say no, It is also its first great battleground. About three quarters of the thousands of processed food items found on supermarket shelves in North America now contain ingredients derived from genetically engineered crops, commonly referred to as genetically modified or GM crops. These ingredients are the sugars, starches, proteins and oils that are extracted from GM canola, soybean, cotton and corn. These crops contain genes which are lifted out from bacteria or from other plants and then pasted in. These genes provide farmers with potent new weapons in their endless war with insects, weeds and plant disease, which is why GM crops have spread so rapidly since they were first introduced in North America in the 1990s. In most crops in which they compete, they now form the major portion of the harvest and the trend is continuing to grow. Yet this new technology has provoked great alarm in Europe, where GM crops are largely banned, and a warning label is required on foods that contain GM ingredients from abroad. There is a lesser but still vocal resistance movement in North America. Most of the concern is about the process of genetically engineering a plant, as opposed to any particular products of that process. So what is that process? The genetic engineering of animals actually came first. Scientists use a very thin needle to puncture the soft outer layers of a fertilized egg cell before injecting the foreign DNA into a nucleus. But plant cells have a thick outer wall which stymied similar attempts at inserting foreign DNA into them. Then, once again, nature itself came knocking with a new gift for genetic scientists in the form of a peculiar plant disease that affects roses and other broad-leaved plants. Called crown gall disease, it causes swellings or tumors at the base of stems. Scientists discovered that these tumors are caused by invading genes from a unique bacteria that lives near the plant's roots called Agrobacterium tumefaciens, it is nature's own genetic engineer. Like other bacteria, in addition to its single large circular chromosome, it has smaller rings of DNA called plasmids. Within some of these plasmids are the genes that cause crown gall disease. When a plant stem is injured, these bacteria migrate up to the wound. Once there, the disease-causing genes break loose from their plasmids, leave the bacteria, and invade a neighboring plant cell. This bacterial DNA then attaches itself to a plant chromosome, becoming a permanent part of the cell's genome, a rare case of genetic recombination between kingdoms or cross-kingdom sex. These new genes are replicated each time the cell multiplies and divides through mitosis. They hijack these cells and force them to multiply rapidly. The result is a crown gall tumor. <laughs> 